Hi, good evening everyone. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat and welcome to STEM Teacher PH channel. So baka po nagtataka kayo, ba't ako ang nandito, no? So since Sir Kenneth will be our speaker for today, I for tonight, I will be hosting his channel, okay? So let's welcome Sir Kenneth. Sir Hello Kenneth, po, Sir Gary. Ayun, <laughs> ano? Ayan, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Yeah, Astro na rin na sobrang busy busy na ating Google Certified Innovator. <laughs> Ayan po. Uh, ako naman po ay nandito para supporta si Sir Kenneth. Kasi nakita, po, nakita ko po yung kanyang channel na kailangan-kailangan ng mga teachers ngayon, lalo na doon sa mga nagtuturo ng math. No? So, um, meron pong mga resources na binibigay na ang ating DepEd. Pero, um, mas maganda po, mas marami tayong resources. So, uh, I would I will encourage you to subscribe to this channel para po um, magamit ninyo, para hindi kayo mahirapan bilang guro, lalo na yung mga samata, no? Hindi kayo mahirapan mag-prepare ng uh, resources ninyo when you conduct a lecture. I guess uh, marami nang nagawa si... Eh, tinignan ko yun, kung makikita yung channel na to ni, teach, uh, ni Teacher Kenneth, marami na po siyang nagawang video tutorial or video lessons no per topic ano sir Kenneth so they can uh, utilize this diba o payagawa naman sila sir Kenneth diba <laughs> pwede naman po uh, we have around three topics po ng ating basic calculus and then we are starting our pre-calculus para po sa mga incoming grade 11 STEM students and more to come pa po syempre <laughs> yan so yan po uh, sa so pagmamahal ni sir Kenneth sa atin Lalo na sa mga math teachers, nag-prepare po siya ng channel niya. So, welcome po sa lahat ng nasa YouTube ngayon, no? Ang dami po nila, hindi ko na po mababasa ang pangalan kung saan saan po nang galing. Sa Legaspi, sa Cebu, sa Dabao, sa Laguna, yan po, no? Maraming maraming salamat po. Mamaya po, we will have question and answer. So, make sure to uh, stay and listen to Sir Kenneth's presentation. Baka po nagtataka naman yung iba, no? Sino ba yung daldal ng daldal na yun? Papakilala mo na ako formally, no? Sir Kenneth. Yes, uh, so, you, yeah, so you can call me uh, Sir Gary or Gary. no I am an educator, a technology coach, and consultant. A Google certified innovator and trainer. a family man with two kids and a lifelong learner just like everyone, no? So we cannot stop learning. So every day po or day, our day-to-day -day is a learning process, no? So we're here under GEG Philippines. Um you can if you need any help with regard to G Suite for Education, you can if you want to apply po, no? For G Suite for Education for schools, you may uh, email education at qsr.com.ph. You may visit bitly.bit.ly slash GEG Philippines because we are conducting these free webinars for everyone to support the teachers, especially this pandemic season. No? So, medyo matatagalan po. Kung habang nagaantay po tayo ng vaccine, medyo online po tayo. No? But even after vaccine, or even after this pandemic, I hope everyone will uh, use technology, integrate technology, kasi nasa, nasa era na po tayo ng technology. So, napuera sa lang po ang lahat, ano? na gumamit ng teknolohiya sa panahon ngayon. So I hope even after the pandemic, we integrate technology because these are the tools that will help us uh, um, teach our concept, the, 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 our subject matter, para po mas malalim ang pagkakat, pagkatuto ng ating mag-aaral. Okay? So if you need any help with regard to training, you may email me. Okay, so, Sir, Sir Kenneth. <laughs> Yan. So, uh, so yung mga teacher natin, no? Medyo marami po tayo from different parts ng ating bansa. Luzon, Visayas, yeah. and now. Ayan, medyo kalat po tayo. And uh, I believe po that teachers have are really lifelong learners. Sabi nga ni Sir Gary na oh. we have that urge para to do more for our students. Kasi we can be someone as teachers, we can do our part para po sa kanila and uh, ayun po, I believe that teachers, technology can be our tool para mas matulungan natin sila. So, how are you po teachers? Kamusta po kayo? So, let me check our chat. Yan, daming nga nila, no? 
Stamtage PH na may hashtag na pala din. Ayun po. So Medyo ano po muna tayo ngayon, kamustahin ko po muna kayo kasi uh, we are in this situation of a pandemic tapos uh, may dumaan po tayo na bagyo, Sir Gary. So a lot of provinces are in signal number one this day, tsaka kahapon. So are we good po? Kamusta po kayo? <laughs> ako actually, Sir Kenneth, ano, kayo na umaga nagtotraining ako, uh, nag-umuulan. Bago pa kami mag, ano, mag-start ng training, sabi sa akin ng tinitrain ko, Ah, uh, Sir Gary, signal number one po tayo ngayon. Ha, ah, ganun po ba? Kasi hindi na ako nakakapanood ng TV ngayon eh, no? Ang dami nating film train kasi gusto, na, gusto natin makatulong. So, wala nang panahon sa TV. Tulog na lang, tapos train, tapos prepare. Ganun na lang tayo. So, I hope everyone is safe, no? So, yan po. Meron po dito sila Miss Elaine, Miss Charisse, Miss Janet, Miss Anna, Sir Gerald, Sir um, uh, Gurley Alcantara, yan, Miss Malu, Ayan, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. No? Sir Kenneth, si, meron ka ba mga gustong kamustahin dyan? So, uh, from uh, our mga co-teachers natin from STI College Santa Rosa, they are watching. And then, uh, gusto ko rin pong kamustahin yung mga fellow scholar ng bayan ko, educators from PUP Santa Rosa. I am a graduate po of uh, PUP Santa Rosa. So, yeah. ayan po. So, wow. Santa Rosa Laguna, di ba po, sir? Santa Rosa Laguna po. <laughs> And so, now that Kasi, we are finished with our kamustahan, sir, can, uh, meron pa po ba kayong sabihin pa sa kanila before we proceed with our content? Uh, ako, sir, kasi malapit sa puso ko yung Laguna kasi from Binyan, Laguna naman ako dati, no? Nung binata ko, dyan ako lumaki sa Binyan, Laguna. Ngayon, kung dati nasa south ako, south of Luzon, ngayon nasa north of Luzon na ako, no? Kasi andito yung aking pamilya. Yan. Sige sir, let's proceed na. Let us proceed for our ano po. So since this is already we are doing a lot of webinars ang Google Educators group po and then uh, there are other groups din po na kung gumagawa ng mga webinars. So I think you we are already familiar with this type, mga distance learning approaches in terms of timing. So konting recall lang po to ng mga konting na pag-aralan natin previously. We have our synchronous. When you talk about synchronous distance learning approach po, we are talking about teaching distance learning na sabay, sync, in sync. Ibig sabihin po, uh, yung teacher, live. magtuturo siya live, and then yung mga sadyante, andun din kasabay ni teacher. So kapag kami pinagawa si teacher, dapat yung sadyante andun, so they will be interacting real time. And then when you talk about asynchronous naman, This is a type of distance learning wherein hindi po sabay. Ibig sabihin, the students can do their own work at their own pace. So, may kanya-kanya po timing. If they want to do it fast or if they want to do it medyo late ng konti, so they can manage their own time when you talk about asynchronous learning. So, both, good, both modes are good. Depende po yan sa capacity ng school. Depende rin po sa ating mga estudyante na ating tuturuan. So that is just oh, okay. a short recall. So in terms of timing, alam ko po ang mga teachers natin na andito na po sa ating mga webinars are very familiar na dito sa dalawang types na to. Mm-hmm. Pero po ngayon, uh, we are Gusto really... Ba? Ah, sige po sir. <laughs> Gusto ko idagdar lang na kasi may mga, may mga alat sa ilalo sa public school, hindi lahat ng ating sudyante kahit sa private school hindi lahat merong internet na available all the time. Ano, hindi laging merong, merong internet connection. Minsan gumagamit lang sila ng prepaid or merong panahon lang nakaka, nakikiconnect sa kapitbahay o nakikisuyo lang gano'n. No? So asynchronous can be uh, effective din, lalo na doon sa mga hindi gano'ng, walang gano'ng resources. So asynchronous learning. Kasi mahirap yung kulang sa resources, magkakapatid. Ano? Minsan, ano ba, tatlong magkakapatid. Tapos, dalawa lang yung computer sa bahay, di ba? Lap, dalawa lang laptop kunyari sa bahay. Tapos, meron palang gumagamit din pala yung, yung dalawang computer na yon ginagamit pala ng nanay at tatay. E di lima sila ngayon maghahati-hati, no? So, mas maganda, makapag-prepare din tayo para sa ating mga estudyante na merong recorded video para dun sa mga hindi makakasabay dun sa synchronous learning natin. Yun lang naman, Sir Kenna. No? Yeah. So, importante po kasi ang inclusion when we talk about education nowadays, lalo na po sa sitwasyon natin, na regardless yeah. of the 
socioeconomic status, capabilities ng ating mga sudyante, as teachers, we should and we can deliver learning to them. Alay yes. Po. Okay. So let's proceed po sa ating uh, first blended learning. So ang DepEd po natin ay, ay switching from a traditional face-to-face -face papunta po tayo ng blended learning. So when we talk about blended learning po, it is a combination of traditional face-to-face -face and online instruction. Ibig sabihin po natin ay merong part na face-to-face -face and then meron din part na naka-online instruction tayo, naka-distance learning. So, depende po yung intensity ng face-to-face -face at ng online instruction dun sa lugar. If IATF will lift yung restrictions, we can do more face-to-face. -face. And then kapag ka medyo kailangan po higpitan ng kaunti, we can do more online instruction. Ang kagandahan po kasi ng blended learning is it can be adjusted yung intensity between face-to-face -face and distance learning depende dun sa needs ng ating estudyante. So that is po for blended learning. Okay. And then, and then po, uh, ang pag-uusapan po natin as per our title ng ating webinar is specifically flip classroom. So when we talk about flip classroom, this is a type of blended learning po. So we have our blended learning and then a type of blended learning we have our flip classroom. Ang flip classroom, flip, baliktad. Ibig sabihin, yung mga lectures po natin ay ginagawa natin before class through online videos, through modules to free up po yung time dun sa klase natin to do more things. So, baliktad po. Kasi nakasanayan natin, traditional. Lahat ng lecture, andun. Math teachers na nandito. So, kailangan po natin ng lecture kasi we have to demonstrate paano ba siya gawin. Hindi po tayo pwede na, as math teachers, magtuturo lang tayo ng konsepto na bato lang tayo ng bato. But we have to demonstrate and then we have to let our students practice what they have learned. So, when you talk about flip classroom, may kukwento lang po ako ng konti, Sir Gary. Sige, Meron sige. Meron po kasi ako uh, estudyante. Last semester, I'm teaching statistics po. Ang statistics, step by step po yan. Mm -hmm. Talagang ang proseso mahaba. Pero madali lang siyang gawin kasi meron ka nang susundan. Na ito yung step 1, step 2, step 3, and so oh. on. I have this student na makakansin mo, first day pa lang, alam ko na marunong, gifted. So we have that student na talagang marunong talaga. And then, after I give my first example, yung iba niyang kaklase, Sir, isa pa po. Sir, more. <laughs> so they're asking for more examples para mas ma-enhance pa, para mas makita nila kung paano gawain. And then, as I look back, nakipapansin ko yung estudyante na medyo marunong, na parang medyo nakita ko yung interest na parang, ah, alam ko na yan, okay? Okay na ako dyan. Pero I have to do another example for the sake of others. Kasi hindi naman na pwede na doon lang tayo sa mabilis matuto palagi. So we have to think about our learners. Iba't iba ng timing yan. Nakagandahan sa flip classroom is that if students have their own module, if students have their own videos, kapag ka medyo nalito sila, medyo may konsepto na hindi agad nila nagets, pwede nilang ipos yung video. Tapos pwede yeah. nilang balikan. Na, oh. ay ano nga ba yung sinabi ni sir? Na, during their time, they have their own pacing, they have their own timing na, okay, nagets ko na, I can move on, while others, kapag ka medyo nahihirapan sila, they can stop for a while, pause the video, and then balikan nila. And then, for those students na mabilis matuto, you can, as teachers, we can give additional resources. Pwede po tayo magbigay ng mga... Enrichment activities, ano? Parang yung more challenging. Na parang yung mga mabibilis natin na mga estudyante, they will not get bored. Na, ay, akala ko, alam ko na, meron pa palang ganito. So, they uh -huh. will have a deeper understanding, especially po sa math. Nako, <laughs> we have students na may mga math anxiety na kahit hindi na deep, kahit hindi pa napasok si math teacher, basta alam nila next period math, parang medyo napapakamat oh, na sila. Oh, Ibablock pa kaya ng learning, ano? <laughs> oh, kaya given this flip classroom, they will have freedom. Meron po silang kalayaan kung paano nila, paano sila matututo. If they want to take it slow, if they, if they want to take it fast, that those can be done kasi before class. Hindi sila limited ng 60 minutes or to 90 minutes na class period. And then, yung class period po natin will be free up, will be freed up to do more things na specific para sa mga sadyante. 
So, pag-uusapan pa po natin yan as we talk deeply po sa characteristics ng Fifth Classroom. So, ang maganda dito, Sir, Sir Kenneth, ano? Kapag hindi naintindi ng student, pagdating ng klase nyo, whether it's synchronous or face-to-face, may idea na yung studyante, hindi mo na spoon feed lahat kasi may background siya. So, more on clarifications na lang siya, ano? Yan ang oh, Fifth Classroom. Okay. So, sorry, sige nga. Continue so, na. meron po akong research na nakita that uh, compared to learning outcomes ng traditional, it is suggested that flip classroom approach can improve performance or at worst, worst case scenario, do no harm. Kaya, ang pinaka-lower level natin, walang mangyayari, pero there is a chance that we can improve the student performance by using flip classroom. Kasi, we are promoting self-paced and independent learning. So, yung mga estudyante po natin, they have their own time, they have their own freedom, as I have said earlier, to do what they want with their own learning. Kasi on this 21st century, ayaw na po natin na estudyante natin na ilalagay sa ating, sa isang box na eto lang nga aralin mo, dapat eto lang, dapat ganyan lang. Mm-hmm. But we are now moving towards independent learning. So we yeah. teachers are now facilitators of learning. Hindi na po tayo yung sa atin ang gagaling lahat ng information. That is not the case nowadays. Yes. Kaya, ayun po. So that's okay. for... Nandiyan kasi yung internet, ano? Andiyan si YouTube, ang dami nilang resources na pwedeng alamin. So, si teacher is more on the facilita- facilitating the classroom, not much of the source of information. Yan. Yes, tama po yan, Sir Gary. Okay. So, we can proceed po sa ating susunod. So, five basic characteristics. So, unang basic characteristics po ng flip classroom is that yung nagagamit po nating oras dun sa labas ng klase ay nagbago. As I've said earlier from our definition, yung nasa labas ng klase natin is just for lecture, for our discussion. Kaya yung assignment na dati na bibigyan ng, oh, sagutan niyo yan, sagutan niyo to, on flip classroom, baliktad na po. Ang mangyayari, Hello, Sir Kenneth. Mukhang naman na si Sir Kenneth, ha? Ayan. So, ayun po, ayan. <laughs> ayan, so, bumalik na si Sir Kenneth. Okay. Outside class, ang nangyayari po ay we do our lectures, we do our we do our videos, pwede po tayo magbigay ng modules natin, and then, inside the class naman po, is we can do our enhancement activities as we have said earlier. So, baliktad na po. So, outside the class are the lectures. Inside the class, we have our enrichment activities. We have more time for collaboration. We have more time for peer-to-peer interaction. We have more time for peer-to-teacher, uh, for student-to-teacher interaction. So, nagbago po. Iba na yung, sa stud- iba na yung oras na ginugugol ng studyante sa loob at sa labas ng classroom. Iba na po yung task na ginagawa at flip classroom. And then for our third and fourth po characteristics ng ating flip classroom. So ito po, uh, teachers, we have our Bloom's taxonomy. So we have our remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and then creating. Yung time po outside the class, what is good with flip classroom is that the time outside the class, ginagamit lang po natin for remembering and understanding levels. Doon lang po tayo sa lecture, doon lang po tayo sa konsepto. Even maybe some few application, pero inside the class, we can proceed with our higher order thinking skills. Na hindi na lang tayo mas stuck sa remembering and understanding kasi yung level na yun, nagawa na natin outside class. Teachers on flip classroom can focus on the higher order thinking skills once they are inside the classroom. Kaya we can do more differentiated learnings, teachers can look individually kung ano po yung mga nangyayari, ano yung status ng students, what can be done. So, enhancement, enrichment, collaboration. So, yun po ang ginagawa inside the class. Hindi na po kagaya dati that lahat ng lecture classroom, lahat ng assignment, lahat activities sa labas, baliktad na po. So, we have different priorities when it comes inside and outside the classroom when we do flip classroom. And putting this po in a context as a math teacher, napakalaking bagay nito. Kasi you can see kung sino ba yung mga studyante that needs more help, sino yung mga studyante na 
medyo okay na naman that you can tap in to help other students. Kasi kapag ka, ginagawa natin yung traditional face-to-face, most of the time, nasa unahan tayong teachers, nagtuturo tayo, and then yung mga estudyante is nakikinig. But if we do flip classroom, those time na spent sa lecture can be put dun sa mga specific estudyante na, na estudyante na makikita natin ano ba yung status nila, ano ba yung pwede pa natin gawin to help them on their learning. That is what's good with flip classroom. And then, so for our fifth one, last one, sa ating basic characteristics, we have technology is used specially video. On our case po, sa Pilipinas, we don't have that strong of a connection. Kaya, we are not limited to video. We can use our modules. So, may mga modules po tayo na pwede natin ibigay sa ating sudyante, pero if kaya naman, we can give video to our students. Kasi, Students nowadays, there are more, they are more visual. Mas appealing sa, sa kanila kapag nakikita nila yung mga nangyayari, kapag ka may mga nakikita sila mga bagay, ah, ganito pala yun, ah, ganun pala ginagawa yun. Pero unlike, last, uh, unlike our traditional na talagang face-to-face na blackboard, uh-huh. show, and then so on. So mas maganda po, mas marami tayong visual aids, mas marami tayong mga animation na ma-utilize when we do our video. Well, so sir, that is what eh, baka yes, yung iba. Eh paano yun kung wala nga yung mga yung mga ibang estudyante, walang ganong resources ano? Tapos magkakaroon naman ng face to face. Ang suggestion ko diyan, pa ako kasi may nagtatanong sa isip nila ano. Ang suggestion ko po diyan, yung mga videos natin na in-upload, dapat meron din po tayong soft copy para kung meron tayong pagkakataon na ibigay sa kanila yung soft copy sa classroom, kung meron pong blended tayo no? ibigay niyo na po yung kopya para hindi na po kailangan mag-internet. So, yung mga ganong paraan po ang pwede natin gawin pag wala pong ganong internet connection. Yeah. So, uh, as Sir Gary stated, meron po tayo mga estudyante na consider ngayon during this time. So, this time of pandemic, we have to consider our three types of students. So, uh, pacheck po ako na next slide, Sir. Okay. So, ayan. Students to consider. So, first student ay yung mga estudyante natin na fully online. Ito yung mga estudyante na meron namang gamit, laptop, smartphones. Meron silang capacity na makakonek sa internet, sa stable na internet connection. So they are our first student to consider. And then we have our second sets of students to consider, which is those students who are partially online. Ito yung mga estudyante naman na merong gadgets. Meron silang smartphone na magagamit, pero hindi nila kaya makakonek consistently. So, maglo-load lang sila. So, 50 pesos, 20, 30 pesos for a day para magpasa ng requirements. So, we have to consider them also. And then, yung pangatlong sets of students are the students na walang gamit, no smartphone, no laptops, those who are not online. So, ang, mat- ang teachers po natin yan, they are making modules. So, modules for those students who are not online. Kasi, as I have said earlier, importante pong inclusion na yung mga sudyante natin, ma-deliver natin yung learning sa kanila kahit na ano pa yung gamit na meron sila. So we have to consider, for our uh, aspects ng flip classroom na titignan natin, meron kung tatlong sets ng students, we have options. So again po, uh, what I am presenting to you are options. Ito mga bagay na ito po ay pwede yung pagpilian, pwede yung pagpilian ng mga sudyante depending on their capacity. Ayan po. So, first one, so how do we do our flip classroom? So, pa next slide po ako, sir. Okay. So, how do we do flip classroom in math? Ito na po tayo sa process. Ito po ang hindi kailangan ma-overlook. Importante po ito when you do our flip classroom in math. First one is communication. Kasi po, when you do flip classroom, meron tayong dalawang area. As I have said, meron tayong distance learning period, meron tayong period of face-to-face. So when we talk about distance learning period, napaka-importante ng communication. How can we connect to our students? So first po, those students who are fully online, those who are fully online, pwede po tayo makipag-communicate using Google Classroom as, the, as our learning management system. So Google Classroom, if you are not familiar yet, napakaganda po niyang tool para po ma-manage natin yung learning ng ating mga estudyante 
Kasi makikita po natin, meron po siyang stream. Ibig sabihin, pwede po mag-post si teacher ng announcements na ito yung mga bagay na kailangan natin gawin. And then, pwede rin mag-post si students ng inquiries nila on that stream na pwede silang maglagay ng concerns or they can message you privately through an email. So, napakaganda pong bagay ng Google Classroom as LMS for those students who are fully online. Tsaka, kagandahan din po sa Google Classroom, it is very organized. Napakaganda po niyang gamitin. So, yes. I have tutorial po, uh, Sir Gary, sa, ng Google Classroom. After this webinar, pwede nyo pong i-check sa channel ko. There are three parts po ng tutorial ng Google Classroom. So, those are for beginners. Tinuro ko po doon yung basic functions ng Google Classroom. So, you may check that out. Mm-hmm. And then, for para our... Para sa mga, ano, no? para doon sa mga, ano ba yung Google Classroom na yan, ano? Para guided sila. Kasi kompleto na si Google Classroom eh. Andiyan yung pwedeng synchronous, asynchronous, mag-distribute, mag-collect, mag-check. Nandun na po yung buong klase ninyo, no? So, mas maganda pong panoorin niyo yung video na yan ni Sir Kenneth kasi po, iyan po yung makakatulong sa atin. Ngayon po kasi, talagang nandiyan na yung ano, nandiyan na yung uh, teknolohiya, no? Ngayon po, hindi na po masama yung mag-load ng mga estudyante natin ng 20, 10 pesos, 20 pesos. Pero, I-suggest, ito po yung suggestion ko, no? kasi sasabihin, eh, paano yan? Madali mo ubos, mahal, lagi naka-online. Ano? Hindi po. Si Google Classroom po, ang gagawin po ni teacher, i-upload po lahat. Ano? So, si estudyante, dapat maging organized lang siya na um, dapat po tayong teacher din. Ano Mag-upload tayo ng files natin every Monday. So, alam kung consistent po tayong nag upload ng Monday, si student, pwedeng mag-check ng Monday afternoon, kung Monday morning po tayo, or Tuesday, tapos, pag nakita niya, ida-download niya lahat ng resources na binigay ni teacher. Yun lang po may connection, ano? Tapos, halimbawa, sa ibang subject, ano, ida-download lang niya lahat. So, lahat yun nakakonect siya sa internet. Google Classroom, yun ang silbi. May download ma-organize ang lahat. Tapos, kapag uh, offline po yan, si Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides man yan, gagana po yan offline. Kaya po hindi kailangan ng internet lagi ng estudyante natin. Ngayon po, siyempre nagtitipid tayo. So si estudyante habang offline, ginagawa na niya yung mga task para pag nag-online siya, ipapasa lang niya ulit dun sa Google Classroom. So para-paraan po yan. No? So dapat po alam ng estudyante natin kung kailan tayo mag upload para isisystematize po nila yung pag-download nila at kung kailan po sila magpapasa. Yun po yung kagandahan ng Google Classroom. Yan. Sige, sir. Okay po. So, that is for those fully online. And then, yung line of communication po natin, for those students na hindi naman sila fully online, so, paano natin may ibibigay yung announcements, paano natin i-inform yung mga sadyante natin, how can we inform them? For those who are partially online, pwede po nilang gamitin yung devices nila, yung messenger app po nila. So, ang mga network provider po natin, they are providing free access sa messenger. Kaya yung mga estudyante na meron namang device, wala silang excuse na, ay, hindi, hindi, ko, kasi mab- hindi ko kasi nabasa, hindi ko alam. So, those who are students who are partially online, pwede kayo makipag-communicate through messenger. So, what I would like to suggest, if you will be doing, pagka medyo, ito po, suggestion lang po sa pagka medyo around siguro grade 8, 9, 10, or senior high school, or tertiary education. Ang suggestion ko po is you, sh- you can assign one one or two ICT representative for each class. Na ang gagawin niyo po ay all the announcements ilalagay sa Google Classroom and then si ICT representative pwede niyo po siyang itap na yung announcements isend mo dun sa group chat niyo. Kasi remember teachers, we have so many classes. Sa amin po, we have eight sections. We are handling eight sections and then Kapag yung walong section na yon ay may concern sa atin ng lahat-lahat ay may message tayo, medyo magkakagulo po. Kaya it's much better if there is a channel of communication. Merong organize. Or pwede nyo pong gawin that you will be setting a schedule na from 8 to 9.30 itong section na to, you may communicate with me. And then kapag ka-urgent lang, tsaka kayo magbigay sa akin na anytime. Pero if not urgent naman yung concern, you have that time slot para hindi po kayo mapupuno, kumbaga, especially, hindi naman po lahat ng teachers are extroverts na people person. So, as a teacher, ako po, may pagka-introvert ako, so, kapag binombard tayo ng sudyante ng napakaraming messages, 
parang medyo nakakapuno okay, din. So, ayun po. Kaya kailangan meron tayong proper uh, organization, kumbaga. So, from Google Classroom to fully online, and then uh, you may tap your ICT representative, ibaba kay Messenger, and then, nung pangatlo, for those who are not online, siguro you may just as teacher sa atin na po ito, hindi na po, po natin kila i-burden pa yung ibang studyante na magpa-load pa para i-inform yung iba na lang kaklase. So for those who are not online, those who are using modules, you may update them by sending a text message. Kasi communication is very important. It is very key. Kapag ka ang studyante nagsasagot ng module, tapos may part na hindi, hindi niya agad magets. so una yan, magtatanong yan sa kaklase niya. So paano ba gawin ito? Ganun, ganun, ganun. Pero kapag ka medyo naguguluhan din, if there is some miscommunication, pwede na pong dalhin sa teacher. So it is much better to have a proper organization ng communication line natin from teacher to students. Kasi napaka-importante po nito when it comes to distance learning. Kasi before we proceed with our content, paano ba gumawa ng content or kung ano man, this is the thing that we have to take into consideration. How can we connect? Kasi yeah. connection to, kasi as teachers, hindi lang tayo con, taga-deliver ng content. Hindi lang tayo basta nagtuturo. So we should think about our students as human beings. We, are, we should think about ano ba yung status? How can we care? How can we reach out to our students? So communication is very important in our distance learning period. Yeah. So hindi natin alam ano ba yung mga pagdadaanan nila sa bahay, yeah. bakit Uh, comply and so on. So Ayun we need po. to have an open line of communication. Lang yung yun lang yung mahalaga talaga daw, no? Okay. So So ito na po tayo for our second one sa ating content. So ito na po yun. So we have our for those who are fully online, pwede po kayo mag-deliver ng online instructional videos and then i-upload niyo po sa YouTube and then pwede pong i-view ng mga estudyante. I've been making educational contents for a month and ito po encouragement ko sa inyo. Okay, I have a certain encouragement, Sir Gary. Sige, Lahat sige. po na nakikita doon sa YouTube channel ko, lahat po ng videos, tutorials, Google Classroom, Google Forms, Math, Calculus, Precalculus, all of those are made. Yung mga cellphone na hawak nyo po ngayon to watch this live, yung mga unit po na gamit nyo, I think 90 or 95% mas mahal pa po sa gamit ko. I am only using a second-hand system unit worth 4,000 pesos and I can do those contents. Yeah. Kaya hindi po issue, hindi po natin masabi na, eh kasi pangit ang computer ko, masyadong mabagal. If I can do those things with a 4,000 pesos worth of a computer, then... If you have better if you have better tools, if you have better equipment then I believe you can do it also. Yeah. So ayun po, talagang creativity tsaka we have to push our envelope. Kasi nga sabi oh. ni Sir Gary kanina, we are lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. So kahit hindi po tayo lumaki sa technology era, we can still learn. Tsaka hindi lang naman hindi naman po kailangan na kasing yung pareho na ng gawa ko. you can, we have different options na sasabihin ko rin po mamaya. And then, yung pangalawa po, for downloadable materials, ito po yung sinabi ni Sir Gary, kapag kayo po yung gumawa ng instructional videos, pwede nyo po yung i-download. And then, once na-download nyo po lahat ng instructional videos, pwede nyo pong ibigay dun sa mga students natin na partially online. Na kahit wala silang internet connection, they can view they can watch your videos. Tsaka, ang kagandahan po kasi dito, pag kayo mismo yung gumawa, maririnig yung boses nyo, ah, ito pala si sir. Ah, ito pala yung teacher ko. So, at least there is some connection. Even though we are far apart, there is still some form of connection between the teacher and the student. Kaya, I highly encourage each and every one, teachers po natin, that if possible, try po natin gumawa ng educational contents, ng video educational contents, since our learners, they are they are highly visual. So, ayan yeah. po. Ayan. So, eto po, may isa po akong ipapakita ang picture ko. Makalat po ito sa Facebook nito nakakaraan. This is not mine. Ayan po. So, makikita oh, nyo wow. po. <laughs> so, <laughs> diba? Magigiting yung ating teacher. <laughs> so, ayan nyo po. Ha? <laughs> diba? Tela, ganun talaga eh. Napakasimple yan. No? Hindi ating kailangan ng tripod. 
Kung walang tripod, magagawa ng paraan, ano? <laughs> Para maging steady, pinabigatan ng upuan, di ba? Ma- Napaka-innovative ng ating mga guro, ano? So, magagawa ng paraan kung gusto, may paraan. Yan ang tawag yan, Sir Kenneth. <laughs> yes, so, so, I just want to show this to you po as an encouragement. Uh, ako po, uh, yung sinabi ko po kanina, those are for the equipment. Ito naman po, ito talaga ang hands off. <laughs> Talagang, ito, siya na po talaga. Yung dedication sa yung passion niya bilang guru. So, oh. ayun po. Uh, let me show something po on our next slide. This is uh, with the permission po of Sir Number Bender, si Sir Dr. Esperanza. Meron po siyang ginawa na tat- pinakita na tatlong methods paano po tayo makakagawa ng content specifically in math. Kung paano po tayo makakagawa ng online instructional video. Yung una po is yung kagaya po na nakita niyo dun sa previous na meron po tayong cellphone, meron tayong camera and then papakita po natin meron tayong whiteboard, blackboard, magsusulat tayo and then we are explaining kung paano siya gawin. So that is for the first method. Ang method to naman po ay pwede silang maglagay ng isang papel, tapos merong marker, tapos yung camera nasa ibabaw. They can purchase their own document camera or gawin din nila ng paraan para yung yung camera ng cellphone nila makikita yung sinusulat ng teacher. And then yung pangatlo, ito po ay isang, kinuha ko po sa isang video na ginawa ko. So this is fully online. Lahat po as may screen recording. So this is made using Google Slides. So, pwede po kayong gumawa na mga ganito yung Google Slides. Kasi ang kagandahan po sa Google Slides is that you can type in those equations in mathematics. Tapos, meron po tayong add-on. And then, ang gagawin po ni add-on is isa-save po niya yung equation as a picture. Kaya pwede niyo po siya manipulate, sure. pwede ilagay. So, that is good about Google Slides. Ayan po. Specifically for math teachers. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Okay. Yan. Okay. Ito naman po yung pangatlo. So, we discussed videos. Kung wala po talagang gamit si student, then modules. Ang kagandahan po sa modules, I would suggest na gumamit po tayo ng Google Docs paggawa po natin ng modules. Kasi it is free to use. Libre po siya. You can access, access it anywhere. And then sabi nga po ni Sir Gary kanina, it works offline. Kahit wala po kayong internet connection, pwede po kayong gumamit ng Google Docs. At ang kagandahan po sa kanya, meron din siyang revision history. So mm-hmm. teachers, alam ko po, tayo ay dumaan sa ating thesis, sa ating research. Ayan. So yung naming ng files. Halimbawa, nagawa tayo ng chapter 1. Chapter 1. Tapos biglang nagpa-revise. Chapter 1 revision nagpa-revise ulit. Chapter 1, revision na. Tapos, wala pa yung defense. Chapter 1, final. Tapos, wala pa, nagpa-revise pa rin. So, chapter 1, final na, final na, final na talaga. So, ang kagandahan po sa Google Docs is, sinesave niyo po yung mga revisions ninyo per period of time. So, halimbawa, by June 10, may revision kayo. And then, kinabukasan, binuksan niyo, by June 11, yung revision nyo ng June 10, pwede nyo balikan using Google Docs. So, hindi nyo na kailangan isipin na ano ba yung file name. Hindi tayo mawawala dun sa file. Kasi isang file lang yung winner workout natin and then yung file name, hindi na natin kailangan isipin kasi andun na si revision history. Nakikita natin ano ba yung nagbago from your June 10 to June 11. Nilalagay din po yun ni Google Docs. So, ayan po. For more specific uh, trainings and webinars, ng mga tools na nabanggit po namin, ayun po, yung may contact Sir Gary. Ayun po. Para po makatulong din po kami sa... Marami po, ano yun, maraming detalye yan. Pero yun po, yung napakasimple bagay na pinapahirapan natin ng sarili natin na meron palang version history, ano? Yung sa paggamit ng docs. Ayan. Okay. So, may, so uh, for our third one, so we have our access. So ngayon, we can communicate with our student. Tapos, pangalawa we already made our content, whether videos, whether modules. So, pangatlo, paano ngayon makaka-access studyante during this distance learning period? So, una, for fully online, we have our internet connection. Of course, those who are fully online, kailangan nila ng connection so they can view those videos online kapag may internet sila. Announcements, they can communicate sa Google Classroom using internet connection. And then, kapag ka... Partially online naman si student, wala siyang regular access sa connection. 
we can do file sharing. So using flash drives, and then pag minute natin si estudyante or you have your ICT representative, ibibigay niya lahat ng files, tapos sila na bahala mag-distribute sa students. So, or if you want to exert extra effort, you may give directly sa bahay nila. So, ayun po. So, depende na po yan. Pero, pwede pa si student with physical distancing, siyempre, pumunta sa school. Ayan. And then, lastly, for those who are not online, meet up point. So, yung mga modules po natin, pwede nilang ibigay. Pwede ibigay pala rather sa kanila, specific place, punta sila sa school, gantong schedule, gantong oras, para makuha nila yung mga files na kailangan for their distance learning period. So, ayan po. So, may iba, no? Kasi may paraan talaga, no? Basta gusto, may paraan. Ayan. Magkagawa natin ang paraan niya. <laughs> okay. So, eto po, uh, eto na po yung process, paano tayo gagawa ng flip classroom. We have two situations. Yung una po is ideal. Eto po yung wala tayong physical distancing measures na Kapag ka wala pong pandemic, this is the ideal situation. Na pagpapagawa ng estudyante, ito na po ay in the context of a mathematics teacher na po. No? So if uh, if you are not a math teacher, pwede nyo po siyang i-contextualize dun sa subject area nyo. And this is only a suggestion para meron po kayong overview paano ba gagawin yung face-to-face -face discussion, face-to-face -face period, kapag ka gumagamit ako ng flip classroom. Kasi lahat ng lectures, lahat ng resources, andun na eh na ibigay na before class eh. So ngayon po, uh, for the first 10 minutes, this is the ideal setup na wala po tayong physical distancing measures kapag ka, when everything is already okay. So first 10 minutes is routine and instruction. Pagpasok po ni estudyante, syempre, halos isang linggo kayong hindi nakita. So pagpasok niyan, routine muna kayo. So kamustahin yung estudyante nyo and then ano ba yung mga concerns nila, ano ba yung mga clarifications nila, Although you have that line of communication that during the distance learning period, iba pa rin kasi kapag ka, kaharap mo na yung estudyante. Mm -hmm. So you have 10 minutes for routine, for your instruction, and then after you do your routine instruction, for 30 minutes, yung assignment na pinapasagutan dun sa traditional, ang gagawin nyo na dito na sa classroom mismo. Pagpasok ng estudyante na i-discuss na lahat, after instruction, magbibigay na po kayo ng problem set, magbibigay na kayo ng exercise, magbibigay na kayo ng activity. It may be individual, it may be by group to promote collaboration, depende po yun dun sa, uh, depende yun dun sa structure ng lesson ninyo. So ang kagandahan dito is that yung time, 30 minutes, yung mga estudyante, sila mismo yung nagawa. Nabawasan yung time na si teacher ang bida. Nabawasan yung time na si teacher yung nasa unahan. During this time, sila mismo. So, after the clarification, bigay si exercises, bigay si activity, sila estudyante, they can collaborate. They, they have their peer-to-peer -peer interaction, they have their peer-to-student-to-teacher uh, interaction para po dun sa lecture, para mas ma-enhance yung natutunan nila. So, kasi pagka ikaw yung nagawa, parang, ano nga ba to ginawa classmate na Ah, okay, ganito pala yung ginawa niya. Why not try ko rin siya? So that is good with this type of learning kapag ka naka-flip classroom tayo. And then, ang maganda rin pong gawin is that after your routine, after your exercises, ang pwede nyo pong gawin is that during that period, dahil nagawa na nila, yung mga estudyante, you may call on students. Sagot, show your solutions on board. So nagbigay ka na uh, exercises, halimbawa about quadratic equation. Pagka after nilang gawin yung exercises ngayon, you will let your student present. Parang sila na mismo yung nagiging andun sa unahan, nagtuturo na rin sila sa kaklasi nila. Kasi there is mastery kapag kayo mismo ay nakakapagturo sa iba. Yes. Ako po ay, uh, during my college years, nanggaling po ako ng engineering bago po ako nag-secondary education. So, ang kagandahan po kasi kapag uh, you have your peers, Ang ginagawa ko po is papasok ako na maaga tapos may mga makikita na ako mga kaklase ko doon. Tapos pagka, oy may sagot ka na sa number ganito. Oy, anong ginawa mo sa ganitong number? So ang ginagawa namin, nagtutulungan kami. Hindi lang po kami basta nagkakopyahan pero inaalam namin yung proseso paano siya gawin. 
So, during that time, dito po sa ideal natin na face-to-face period ng flip classroom, mga estudyante, they can teach each others and then after that, they can also be somehow a teacher ng mga kaklase nila. They will show, ito yung solution namin, ganito yung ginawa namin, pero andun pa rin po tayo, syempre, we have to check, we have to facilitate learning, pero again, hindi na po tayo ang bida. Ang bida na po ay mga estudyante. They are independent. So, they, we promote indep- independent learning, we promote self-paced learning. Kaya ito po yung maganda dito sa part na to. And then lastly, after mag-present the students, we have our wrap-up and assignment. And then additional instructions for our next meeting na face-to-face. So, ganun po. So, that is for ideal. And then, lastly, so, ito naman po yung uh, pwede natin gawing measure since we have physical distancing. Since we have physical distancing, we will be assuming na yung movement ng mga estudyante will be less. So, tingin ko nga po kapag uh, nasa mas strict na area, malabo na makapag-meet weekly. Pero depende pa rin po yan. We are still waiting for updates. Pero if we cannot meet our students weekly, so ano po yung pwede natin gawin? So ang pwede natin gawin is that i-increase po natin yung mga gawain na ginagawa ng student at a distance. Tapos, babawasan po natin yung sa face-to-face. Mm-hmm. So, ang mangyari, here are the changes when we do this physical distancing time. So, yung mas mahaba po yung routine and lesson inquiries. Kasi mas mahaba yung oras na hindi kayo nag-meet, mas maraming tanong ang studyante dyan. So, pagpasok nila, so, do your routine and then ask them, ano ba yung clarification? Ano ba yung mga bagay na medyo nalilito pa kayo? And then after those routine and lesson inquiries, then may mga estudyante na parang, ah, ganun pala yun, hindi ko agad siya na-gets. So you will be giving, giving them time for self-assessment. Ibigay nyo sila ng period wherein after that inquiry, they can have time to do their self-assessment. Ano ba yung mga bagay na dapat ginawa ko? Ano ba yung mga bagay na babaguhin ko dun sa assignment na pinagawa? And then after they do their self-assessment, tsaka lang po tayo mag-check at mag-student presentation. Kasi medyo limited na po ang collaboration during this period. They can collaborate online. So they can collaborate through a distance, text message, uh, through Google Classroom, through messing, messaging app, messenger app, messenger app. Pero pagka kasi we are at a physical distancing, ang collaboration po is highly yes. discouraged kasi, in classroom. In classroom. Kasi mm-hmm. we have to think about the health of our students. Kaya ang gagawin natin is those collaboration, we encourage them to do it at a distance. And then pagpasok, after inquiry, self-assessment. And then after self-assessment, then proceed na po tayo dun sa checking and student presentation. So, after i-check yung problem sets, yung mga ginawa ng mga sadyante, and then, meron po tayong additional na 15 minutes for the enforcement of learning. Na ano pa ba yung pwede natin gawin to enrich? Ano pa ba yung pwede natin gawin para mas lumalim pa yung pagkaunawa ng ating sadyante? Remember po, uh, isang karakteristik ng flip classroom is that yung mga lower order thinking skills, yun po yung nasa distance. We we will be enhancing, we will be talking about the higher order thinking skills kapag ka ando na po sila sa classroom. And lastly, wrap up and assignment. So, ayun po, uh, this is very flexible, yung time, depende rin po sa topic, kasi may mga topics that requires a lot of time to do more compared to other topics. So, as math teachers, I think na kita niyo na naman po yun. <laughs> kapag ka yung mga sadyante niyo needs more help, kung mga sadyante niyo ay may mga kailangan pang ayusin, okay, kasi uh, kita naman po natin yun. Pagka nasa unahan tayo, uh, sino ba yung mga sadyante na parang nawawala na yung interest, that you have to do something, that you have to uh, exert extra effort para matuto sila. Kasi, mat, as I said earlier, may mga sadyante po dyan na may mat anxiety. Hindi po lahat yan uh, mga math genius. So, we have to think about them. We have to work slowly and hand in hand with our students para matuto sila at their own timing, at their own pace, and we encourage independent learning. So, ito po yung kagandahan ng flip classroom is that we encourage independent learning with our students. So, 
That's it po. So, uh, mm -hmm. any questions po? Ayan po, uh, Sir Gary. <laughs> Insights po. Uh, ayan po. Sa akin lang, ano, pag may pag gusto, may dahilan. Pag ayaw, ay, ano yung kasabihan natin? Basta gusto, so, may, may dahilan. No? Pag ayaw, may dahilan. Uh, marami na pong guro, no, na nag-extra, we have to do extra mile, especially at this time. Bilang guro po, marami ang idinidemand sa atin ng distance learning, you know? Pero kaya po natin yan. Sa pagmamahal sa ating misyon na makapagturo, magagawan po natin ng paraan yan, no? Um, Medyo challenging lang yan sa mga tenured teachers natin, ano? Uh, kasi hindi sila, uh, hindi sila, parang ayaw nila ng technology. Pero, kung gusto magagawan po yan ng paraan. So, for the young teachers, uh, yung mga millennials at yung mga generation Y and Z, uh, ay Y, generation Y, you know? So, I suggest we help the the tenured teachers, our seasoned teachers, to uh, to be equipped with technology. Yan. So, tulong-tulong tayo. Kakayanin natin lahat ito. No? Yun lang. Wala na akong tanong. Pero tingnan natin kung mayroong tanong ating mga mga manonood. So, lahat po ng viewers natin, if you have any question, tanong po tayo. Okay? Uh, okay. Meron dito ang isang tanong. Sige, tingnan natin. Si... Uh, si Ms. Annalisa Polycarpio, Hi, may I know which assessment tools are you using both formative and summative? Ayan. So, so yeah, Sir Sir Kenneth, um, ano daw ba? May I know which assessment tools are you using? Both? Uh, which assessment formative. tools are you using? <laughs> okay. So, uh, this is somehow challenging, especially sa distance learning. Kasi nga po, as I said earlier, meron po tayong tatlong klase ng sudyante na kailangan consider. So, when we do formative assessment, I would suggest for those who are fully online and those who are partially online, meron po tayong Google Forms. We can use them. Meron din po ako separate tutorial kung paano gumawa ng quiz using Google Forms to do formative assessments. Kasi ang formative assessments po, mas maluwag pa tayo dyan. So, we can do that. And then, for those who are doing modules, they can do their formative assessments in their module na po mismo. So, ayan po. Kasi, uh, when we talk about distance learning, depende rin po yan kung synchronous or asynchronous. Pero, most of our schools are not ready for synchronous yet. Kaya, mas marami po ang mas gagawa ng asynchronous. So, we can use utilize those tools. We can utilize our Google Forms for, kasi ang Google Forms is, they can do it, if you, they are fully online, walang problema. If they are partially online, then, mag-load lang sila ng 10 pesos, 20 pesos, and then sagutan na nila yung form for their formative assessment. And then, yung mga naka-module naman po is that, ando na po yun, nakalagay na po yun dun sa module ninyo. Kasi hindi hindi na po natin kailang i-bother pa yung so much movement na si estudyante ay kailangan pang pumunta. Eh, that is for distance. Pero po, syempre, much better if we can do our assessments in class if yung restrictions po ay lifted na. Pero if hindi po natin siya agad magagawa in class, then we can use forms para po makagawa tayo ng assessment. Yeah. Mayroon pang isang question kasi nabanggit natin kanina merong add-on for math equations. Natanong niya, sir, ano daw ba pangalan ng math equation na yun? So, Ang pangalan po ay math equations din. <laughs> yeah, math equation. Or you can also look for equation editor. Uh, nung last episode po namin ni Sir Adrian, uh, meron po, ayun po, equation editor po, nasa Google Slides, pwede po yan. No? So, mamaya po, we'll talk about ano, yung session naman po namin sa Sunday uh, with Sir Adrian on Sunday, 8 p.m. din po. Okay? So, tingnan natin, meron pa bang ibang tanong tayo? Asan uh, tayo? So, uh -huh. Let, Sir, meron ka bang nakitang question pa? So, ayun po, uh, meron pong question, ito po si, uh, ito po, medyo yeah. ano po yan. So, how, how could we eliminate or discourage cheating during graded activities? Yeah, challenging yan, no? <laughs> pero lagi ko na-encourage, na-encounter na yung ganyang question. So, Sir Kennedy, ikaw, sige, mauna ka ba or ako muna? Ah, sige po, uh, meron pong restrictions, if you are doing summative assessment, meron pong mga restrictions 
when you are using Google Forms para mas makontrol nyo po yung mga estudyante ninyo. So, you may shuffle the order or you may put some restrictions na hatiin nyo po into sections. And then, when you talk about cheating kasi, so, marami, ang mga estudyante natin, may mga diskarte yan eh. Pero, this is about values na if we instill na it's not about the grades, but but it's about what you learn. Kasi, as a teacher, ako po transparent ako sa grades ng mga sadyante ko. Especially, I'm teaching senior high school and college. Marami po dyan na mga nagtatanong. And then, ah, uh, ano, bakit ganun yung grades ko? Bakit yan? But, orientation pa lang, sinasabi sa kanila that you, my record is very transparent na kung ano yung binigay ninyo sa akin that will be, I am a math teacher, so yung behavior ng numbers that is not hindi po sa akin malayo kaya when you talk about cheating we can put all of the restrictions that we want pero if our students values grades over the actual learning gagawa at gagawa po sila ng paraan kaya we yeah. instill that value correct i agree with sir kenneth ano um makaga pag sabi nga natin kayo na kapag gusto may paraan gagawa at gagawa ng paraan ang ating mga estudyante but Tama yun sinabi, Sir Kenneth. Ano ba yung gusto natin talaga i-impart sa kanila? In my case, our, in my in my opinion, ano po, no? more than the content that we want to teach them, we have to teach them good values, the honesty. Kasi sabihin natin sa kanila, ganito lang naman, no? kung mag-cheat kayo, hindi kita mapipigilan. Ito po sinasabi ko sa mga dati kong estudyante, no? kung gusto niyo mag-cheat, wala akong magagawa. Maitatago at maitatago sa atin yan, no? ng ating mga estudyante. Pero, Pagka-graduate nyo, anong alam nyo? Iyon lang naman ang tanong natin lagi. Anong natutunan mo? So, anong natutunan? Mag-cheat ba? Kasi when we talk about distance learning, we cannot really say that it is 100% cheating free. Oh, walang cheating. So, ako po, ang suggestion ko dyan, we, uh, we give open-ended question. Kasi doon mapipiga otak nila, ano? Let's say for math, how do you apply it in real life? With this theories x squared plus y squared, ano ba ibig sabihin niya sa tunay na buhay? Paano mo ma-i-apply yan? So doon, mapipigyan niya na kung anong alam niya. Kung nare-relate niya ba sa tunay na buhay, yung natutunan niyang concept sa math. Kasi kahit na mag, mag x plus y yan is equal to 4, anong ibig sabihin nun? Pag hindi niya alam, edi hindi niya alam, you know how to grade such student. Ano po? So, yan po yung aking panonood dyan. Wala po, hindi po natin magagarantiya yan. So, our values is important. Yan. So, meron pang next question na nakita dito. Baka daw kasi, can we suggest a specific recommended apps aside from Google Classroom to enhance online engagement? Meron ka ba, sir, naisip? So, when you talk about engagement, so, hindi lang po Google Classroom. So, we can use... Ayun nga po, si Sila Sorgari, marami po yun i-imparts on their future webinars that uh, there are features ng Google Docs, Google Slides, na pwede po natin gamitin to enhance engagement. So, uh, we cannot explain it in detail lahat po dito kasi we only have one hour, pero Sila Sorgari, they are, they are seasoned na pagdating sa ginagawa <laughs> training. So, they can share a lot when it comes to these tools. Ayun po. Ayan po. Ang dami kong question, oh. medyo mahihilo po ako kasi yung mga nakikita ko pong question, pag i-click ko, hindi ko na siya nakikita, baka iba ma-click ko, no? Ayan po. Uh, sandali po, tingnan natin. Karamihan po kasi nagt-thank you. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pag Ay, ayan, tingnan nyo. Meron akong, ano, na-click na naman. <laughs> hindi yung gusto kong... <laughs> Pero anyway, that's what I always tell my students. Grades are just numbers. What matters most is the learning. Ayan. Ayan po. No? So, ito pa. Ito to. Meron tong isang question. Magandang question din to. No? How do we manage the exchange of assessments from the teacher to the students and vice versa, especially for teachers who like to write comments about the students' work? Ah, ayan po. No? Um, with Google Docs po. Let's say, nasa Google Docs yung ating, ano, no? yung ating, uh, binigay sa kanila, you can make comments, digital comments po, meron po siya doon. So, it is possible po. Kapag, kapag wala po namang, ano, uh, kung hindi po online lagi, ano, uh, medyo challenging po kasi 
magkakahiwalay po tayo. But with Google Docs, you can do comments. You can highlight specific area para po mag-comment kayo, para mabati nyo, nasabi nyo, oh, very good, this is well written, or oh, well well thought of, mga ganyan. So, pwede po yun using Google Docs. Yan. So, ikaw ba, sir, meron ka bang additional answer for this one? Ayun na po yun, sir. Ah, uh, that is well explained. <laughs> Ayun po. Hmm. So, Google Docs, Google Slides. So, napakarami po, if you want to explore those tools, napakarami pong ino-offer ni Google to help us educators sa ating pagtuturo. Pinapagaan po nila yung ating trabaho bilang teachers. There are different ways, there are different technologies that we can utilize para mas lalo nating mapalalim, mas, mas lalo nating mas mapataas yung kalidad ng ating pagtuturo sa ating sudyante sa iba't ibang asignatura. Sir, ito, directed sa'yo, Sir Kenya talaga, no? kasi it's all about math. What could be the best approach in dealing with slow learners? O yung mga tinatawag nating challenge students especially in math, since we are now in this new normal. Ano ba? Paano nga ba ang paraan? Kasi ako hindi math teacher. <laughs> Mayroon po, sir. Suggestion para sa kanya. Ayan po. So, uh, ano po muna natin? So, from during face-to-face -face instruction, we are doing interventions po. So, kapag na nakita namin na medyo mahina si estudyante, we have to do certain interventions para tulungan si estudyante na from here, maiangat po natin sila pero on the online, so we can also do interventions. We have our communication lines. We can schedule certain period with them na we will be talking with them. If they are capable na online, then online. If uh, hindi naman po online, then we can have our different channels of communication para mas matulungan natin sila. Kasi when we talk about intervention, when you talk about helping students, communication is key. Importante po yun. Before the content, Bago po, sabi nga po ni Sir Gary, before we talk about those equations, we have to have that relationship, we have to have that care for our student na andito ako as a teacher para turuan ka. So how do we deal with them? Uh, in, sir Ken, no, gusto kong i-point ano, out na dapat po kasi every week, uh, on a specific time in a week, meron schedule, po tayong consultation. So we can schedule consultations. Yeah, consultation. Kasi ito na yung ano eh, um, medyo kailangan na, ng mga estudyante. Consultation, regular, uh, parang uh, let's say every MWF from 10 to 10.30, I am available for consultation. So mga ganun. We have to make ourselves available for our students, especially at this time. Yan po, no? Sir, uh, siguro po, uh, this will be our last question, sir. May nakita po kasi ako specifically about Sige, uh, math video tutorial. So, what are some challenges that you had encountered in creating math video tutorials? So, as I have said, I've been making, although medyo familiar na po ako sa video editing softwares, pero I've been making uh, content for a whole month now. Meron po akong daily uploads. So, ano po yung challenge na na-experience ko? Una po is yung uh, limited na equipment. Pero as I have said, nagagawaan po siya ng paraan. And then, uh, second naman po, when uh, you are doing your math video tutorials, yung other environmental factors, yung noise sa paligid, ayan. So you can use uh, audio editing softwares. So I for one, I am using Audacity, if you're familiar with that. So, Audacity po is a free software na yung mga recorded po natin na uh, yung audio po natin, it can be put on that software tapos lilinisin po niya yung noise. Kaya, kung mapansin niyo po, yung progress po ng videos ko, yung mga unang videos ko, meron po siyang background noise, narinig na rinig. Pero as I progress through content creation, then nakikita ko po, ah, pwede ko palang gamitin to. And then... Uh, as you go on, practice lang talaga. If you're doing math content, if you're doing any subject content, you practice. Kasi as you practice, hindi pa yan talaga perfect sa umpisa. Talaga makikita mo yung improvement as you go on. As you practice, ah, pwede ko palang gawin to. Ah, pwede ko palang gawin to. Kasi if you really care for yourself, if you really want to give your best, you will improve on your craft palagi. Kasi you want to give more to your students, especially mm. during this time of pandemic. Ayan. Sabi ko, Sir Kenyan, sabi ko nga sa mga estudyante ko lagi, kasi uh, parang gusto ko lang i-post sa kanila, no, sa mga teachers na nanonood ngayon. 
ito pong tool na kailangan nating matutunan, wala po tayong magagawa kundi mapilitin po natin ang sarili natin. Kasi sabi mo nga, practice ano, parang pag-swimming 'yan ano. Pag mag para matutukan mag-swimming, hindi ka matututong mag-swimming kapag nanood ka lang ng YouTube video, di ba? Hindi ka matututong mag-bike kung manonood ka lang ng video. Kailangan para matutukan mag-swimming, lumusong ka sa tubig. Kailangan para matutukan mag-bike, kailangan sakay mo yung bike. Para matuto ka talaga mag-swimming, kailangan makalunok ka ng tubig. Di ba? Para matuto ka mag-bike, kailangan medyo masugatan ka ng konti. Walang natuto mag-swimming at matuto mag-bike na hindi nakalunok ng tubig at hindi naka- na- sumempla o nasugatan man lang. No? So, medyo masakit, medyo mahirap, pero kakayanin natin, practice. Di ba? Practice lang talaga. We just have to do it. Okay? So, ayan. Sir, sige. Yung mga nagtatanong ng certificate, ano? Ayan po, uh, for our certificates po, uh, this line, this uh, link is open until tomorrow po ng 8am. Kasi pagka nagsabay-sabay po tayo ngayon, baka magbagal ulit. So, <laughs> okay. kaya uh, I am giving time, bukas po siya until tomorrow ng 8am. So, for your certificate, just naroon po dyang evaluation. So, tinyurl.com slash class. Ayan. So, click nyo lang po. Uh, type, in, type in nyo lang po yung link and then after you type in the link, it will be directed sa isang Google Forms and then fill up nyo lang po yung form and then after that, we already have your details and then uh, i-announce ko na lang po sa Facebook page ko kung ano po yung kung ilang percent na po yung nare-release natin na certificate. And uh, for those people na na-miss yung webinar and then they want to receive their own certificate, So after po ng 8 a.m. bukas, I will be releasing another forms para duman po dun sa team replay. Meron tayong team replay, Sir Gary. So for oh, those people yeah. who want to view this, so I will be putting a password para sa ating Google Forms. Ang oh, itatype nyo naman po ay keep on learning. Ito po yung password ng ating replay. Kasi lifelong learners tayo, have to keep on learning. Okay. So, For our certificates, yung kanina po, uh, tinyurl.com slash class and then for team replay, they can receive their own digital certificates by typing in the replay password, keep on learning. Kaya nasa dulo po ito para ma-ensure natin na talagang nakinig sila sa webinar bago uh, sila makakuha ng ating mer- certificate. Meron mga, ano, meron mga question na ano daw ba ang iyong ano? Ano daw ba ang iyong Facebook ano ba? Na, na, nawala na yung question kanina. May nagpatanong na yung Facebook. Ano? So, maybe you can flash it again or meron ba tayo? Uh, para po doon sa mga nagtatanong naman, uh, yung sa, again po, for, for the Google tools are given for free by Google. That's part of their uh, po, service. Uh, Ang everyone. Facebook po po ay STEM Teacher. Yeah. Ah, yung, yung channel. Siya ka Facebook. So, ayan po siya. So again, for those who are asking how can we help, you may go to uh, for GC for Education application, education at usr.com.ph. That is for free. For the channel naman po, um, ayun po, EdTech and Beyond lang naman po. No? Tapos for GEG Philippines, bit.ly slash GEG Philippines. Ayan. For uh, the channel of Sir, this channel is STEM Teacher PH. Ayan po. Yan. So, maraming salamat po sa mga sumubaybay. Ano? Ang dami po lang na gano, keep on learning. Yan po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga uh, Let us know if you have any question. Feel free to email. Uh, you can, so ipopost po namin yung, ito pong video na to ay nakapost din sa Facebook. Go ahead, make a comment or ask questions. We'll try to answer everything, uh, all your comments if you have or all your inquiries if you have any. Okay po? So again, maraming salamat po sa pagsubaybay. Uh, I hope you will stand, uh, you will also watch on uh, on Sunday, this coming Sunday, June 14, 8 p.m. We have uh, Learn with Adrian and Gary. That's our episode two. So collaboration po. So maybe we can have collaboration then no? under GEG Ortigas. And GEG South Manila naman po, si Sir Adrian. So hopefully Sir Kenneth and other members of GEG, Ortigas and GEG South Manila, we can have a collaboration. So we can have GEG Philippines, we can do it for 
the Filipino teachers, no? So, second, last words, tip po sa kanila, last uh, tip for them. So, ang last tip ko lang po is, again, we keep on learning. We have so many information right now, and then we have, let, just, let us just take it, and then, wag lang po natin siya basta ilagay sa utak natin, but we practice it inside our classroom for the sake of our students. Yan. Thank you, sir. Ako naman, tanda niyo po, first time natin to, wala pong perfecto, ano? Okay po magkamali. Ituro po natin yan sa, dapat po andun yung itinuturo yun natin na okay lang magkamali. Basta matuto tayo dun sa pagkakamali natin para sa susunod, hindi na natin siya gagawin. Ngayon, yung ating pong challenge ngayon is paano ba ito magtuturo ng distance learning? How are we going to do it? Huwag po tayong umasa na perfect po tayo. Hindi po tayo perfect. Mapag-perfect lang po natin tayo natin itong craft na ito pag nag-practice tayo. Okay? So, good night everyone. Thank you so much for tuning okay. in. Sir Adrian, uh, Sir uh, Kenneth, mayroon ka pa bang sasabihin? Okay Gusto na po. So, uh, just uh, if you want to look for more math contents, uh, follow lang po ang ating YouTube channel. Subscribe yeah. there. And then, uh, palagi po yan, they, uh, I will be uploading videos as many times as I can <laughs> to help you yeah. all. Ayan po. Okay. Sa akin so, din po, no? EdTech and Beyond. Okay? EdTech and Beyond. Yan po ang aking channel naman. So, for now, good night everyone. Stay safe. God bless us all. Paalam! <laughs>